Baxter. This is part two of the message entitled Taking a Gospel Trip. Taking a Gospel Trip. In part one, Evangelist F. Baxter take us to a ride. We go down Route 80, Route 91. And I was planning to come up Route 89 in this gospel trip with gospel song and reading the Psalms, the Word of God. But because of time, I wasn't able to come back up on Psalms 89. I run out of time coming up on Psalms 89, Route 89. So this is part two of the message entitled Taking a Gospel Trip. Taking a Gospel Trip. We're going to take some time with some gospel song and reading the Psalms. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Science World Broadcast with Evangelist F. Baxter. This message indeed, I know for sure you'll be truly blessed. Because in this message we'll be reading the Word of God, having some wonderful gospel song. So this is part two of taking a trip, taking a gospel trip, taking a gospel trip. May the peace of God, may the grace of God rest upon you. May you receive a pep in your step and a wave in your hand after you listen to this message. And an excitement in your heart to let people, somebody know that Jesus, God's son, is coming again. And there is hope in the name of Jesus. And there is deliverance in the name of Jesus. And there is still a bomb in Gilead as we meet finally one day. Finally, one day, if we stay faithful and stay with Jesus, we're going to meet. I mean, we're going to go up on Route 89, Route 89, taking a gospel trip. We're going to go up on Psalms 89. We're going to go up on that route. In part one of taking a trip, a gospel trip, uh, in Psalms, we read Psalms 91 and we start Psalms 89. But I thought instead of just start where I left off, I'm going to start from verse 1, going up Psalms 89. Pray. Welcome once more to the Science World Broadcast with Evangelist F. Baxter. This message entitled Taking Taking a Gospel Trip Part 2. Taking a Gospel Trip Part 2. And the peace and the grace of God fall on me and you. Dear God, bless my mind and bless my time. And may this person who took their wonderful time to tune into the Zion's World broadcast, may they be filled up to the top that they may be running over. May your words bless their soul. May as we travel through Psalms 89, may we receive a blessing in gospel song and in the reading of the word of God. Dear God, bless my mind and bless their time. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I was get we get ready to take this trip. Sometime when you go on a trip, when you go on a trip rather, sometime you have some uphills, you have some turns, you have some twists and turns. In the Christian journey, as we go from day to day, there are some good days and there are some hallelujah days. But I'm here to encourage you that with Jesus we will have a safe trip. And so as we travel on this road, I pray that you will be blessed. Buckle up your seat belts where we can go down some big hills and we're going to go up some deep hills and some curves. Stand by for the reading of the word of God. At this moment, 
We are going down a hill at this time. Bottle up your seatbelt. Stand by for the word of God. Okay, we're coming up on a curb now, so uh, keep your seat belts on. Ladies and gentlemen, Science World Broadcast, Message and Pike are taking a gospel trip. And we're coming up with Psalms 89. We're gonna go route, we're gonna go up Route 89. Route 89, that's a route that will bring you joy and peace. Look for part one. We went up route, we went down route 91. Now we are coming up back route 89. Stand by. gentlemen our Christian journeys there are some rainy days and there are some sunshine there are some days when you want to skip and shout and there are some days when you just want to lift your hands and pray taking a gospel trip ladies and gentlemen what can you expect on this trip you're gonna you're gonna experience some wonderful gospel song and you're gonna hear the plain true word of God the word of God will be read from Psalms 89. We're going to go up Route 89, and I know you'll receive a blessing. So while you go down, we're just going down a hill right here now. So don't don't get discouraged. Like the word of God is getting ready to come forward. So stand by for the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. This route we are taking, Route 89, is a route that will lead us home. If we trust and obey, if we believe and we, we live by the word of God, the Route 89 is a route that can lead us home. So stand by, you're going to receive a gospel song before we take off on Route 89. leads home and it's sweet to know as we onward go that the way of the cross leads home in this message I want us to see that in spite of what we are going through that God made a way that we can come home and go home come home he who are weary come home and as we take this trip I want you to have a wonderful time on the trip but not just a wonderful time on the trip but I want you to know that you can have blessed insurance on this trip. I said in part one before of the same message entitled Taking a Gospel Trip Part One. This is part two. I said in part one that God have the best insurance policy. So once you're on this trip, this gospel bus, this gospel trip, if you follow the word of God, if you obey the word of God, if you do the things of God, ladies and gentlemen, you can be sure that you'll get home. And so ladies and gentlemen, I just want to encourage you as you take your time to get on this gospel bus, gospel trip. Remember, you can't enter through the gate unless you have the ticket. 
Jesus died on the cross so that you and I wouldn't be lost. Jesus died that we can have eternal life. And ladies and gentlemen, we can have eternal life, but we have to obey the word of God. So as you come on this gospel trip, I want to let you know that the Bible said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. David said, Out of my steps in thy word, Psalms 119 verse 133. Psalms 119 verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When there's no light, you can't see where to turn. I want to let you know that there is power and deliverance in Jesus' name. So let us get ready. Time is winding up. Signs of the times are everywhere that the coming of the Lord is near. If it's not one thing, it's the next. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that we got to rely on God. For judgment day is coming. Let us be ready to go home. Enjoy the trip in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, when you take a trip, you always have a destination where you want to go to. Every trip that I have taken, I knew where I was going to go. In this Christian journey, you take a trip. You became a Christian. You join up with God. You must have a destination. Ladies and gentlemen, the destination every Christian hope for, I do believe, is to be upon Alice Luya Square with God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as you go from day to day, I want to let you know that to get to this destination, while we are traveling on the Christian journey, we must have the proper information to get to our final destination. If we don't have the correct information, we'll become destitute and we may get lost in the desert. When we become destitute, we may not know where to turn or where to go. But I just want to let you know that the word of God is our guide. That's why we are going to go Route 89 today. Psalms 89, Route 89. This message entitled Taking a Gospel Trip Part 2. We're going to go Route 89. Why? Because the Word of God is our best guide. In Exodus 20, God tell us how to go. Exodus 20 tell us that we shouldn't steal. We shouldn't do all this. Commit adultery. Lie. We shouldn't worship the false God. We should remember the Sabbath. We should honor our mother and our father. The Bible tells us we shouldn't steal, we shouldn't lie, all that. This is the guide. When you're traveling on a trip, you need a map or a GPS, but you need something to guide you to get to your final destination. If you don't have a guide, you will get lost on the journey. And ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to get lost on our Christian journey. And so we want to get closer to God. Here I am in the name of Jesus. As I speak to you, I pray that God will let me get to my destination, heaven and you. And I pray that if we're carrying any weight of hate or sin or anything that will weigh us down or anything that will stop us from getting to the best final destination, I pray that we'll drop it and stop it in the name of Jesus. Dear God, if I box to have any weight or any sin that will hold me back, I pray that you will let me put it down, wash it away, and take it away. So I'll get to my final destination. This woman, this man, boy or girl, that same prayer I pray for myself, I pray for them. We're getting ready. We're getting ready for Psalms 89. Psalms 89, start the reading at verse 1. Verse 1, coming up. I don't know how y'all look, but I go and I look in the room, I got some friends. You know, my daughter, she leaves Grandkids, I look in the room and my grandkids they sleep. Let me know that God is a good God. But sometimes I forget to wonder just a few words that I say.
Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and the Zion's World Broadcast. This is Message Intake of Taking a Trip Gospel, Taking a Gospel Trip Part 2. Psalms 89, Route 89 coming up. Route 89 coming up, I promise you, but I'm just taking a little bit of this song here. <laughs> Route 89 coming up, Route 89, Psalms 89, we're taking Route 89 coming up. Stand by, I'm just enjoying this a little bit. Is that alright? Come on. Hallelujah. Bam, bam, boom. Oh Lord of mercy. Come on. Is that all right? I could have a little fun on the trip. Hey, it's that all right? I could have a little fun on the gospel trip. You know, being a Christian, what do you do to enjoy life? Can we have a little fun on this gospel trip? Psalms 89 coming up, Route 89, but just let me have a little fun. Huh? <laughs> Do you ever remember somebody promise you they go away and they say I will be back? Can you remember that? Oh, you look forward for that person to come back, especially if it's somebody you truly love. So we love Jesus, don't you? We love Jesus, don't you? I do. And we're looking forward for him to come back, right? You get excited when you love somebody and you're waiting for them to come back, right? And Jesus, I love him. And, and we're going to go up Route 89 today. Psalms 89. But I just love this song because when, you, when, you, when you're excited about something or someone, you, you spend time, right? Christian don't mean we don't have life and being a Christian don't mean we don't have joy so I'm having fun in the Lord and I'm excited I'm happy to be a Christian that's the best choice I make <laughs> message entitled taking a gospel trip part two and this trip including gospel songs and reading the psalms the word of god some of us 
take trips and planes. Some of us take trips and buses. Some of us take trips without cars. Some of us take trips and trains and whatever else transportation. The purpose of taking a trip is to get to your destination. The longer the trips, the faster we hope the vehicle or the plane or whatever transportation we take would go. Yes, some of us take, someone remind me that some of us take trips and ships and boats <laughs> and different planes and different things. But today I'd like you to take a trip with me as we go to the Psalms 89. This is part two, taking a gospel trip. I hope you receive a blessing on this trip. And um, we're going with Captain Jesus. He never lost a case. He is someone that is willing to give us grace instead of disgrace. Uh, the woman that was caught in adultery was worthy of death according to the people with the stones. Uh, one commentator says some of them with the stones was guilty of the same sin. However, they didn't get caught, so they were happy to stone somebody that they could show off. In stoning the woman, they look good. Some of us, unfortunately, in destroying stones and dirt is for us to look good. But let me tell you, Psalms, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3 said, Proverbs 15, verse 3 said, The eyes of the Lord is in every place. So I, Baxter, come to a conclusion that a true Christian life is to be faithful to God. If you are faithful to God, you are good. Because if you are faithful to people, let me tell you, they don't know everything. God knows everything. So the truth is, we can fool people, but we can't fool God. So I come to a conclusion asking God to have mercy upon me and to live a life from day to day to please God. So as we go on this gospel trip, Captain Jesus never lie. And he's willing to save you and I. I'm, I'm going to go up on Psalms 89. I'm going to read Psalms 89, the word of God. Get your Bible as you know Psalms 89. The Route 89, going up on Route 89. Now, I might read a little fast because this is a long Psalms. And I promise you I'm going to finish this Psalms. I'm going to finish this Psalms in this message today or tonight in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, keep my mind. Bless my time. Bless this person's mind and their time to listen to the Zion's World broadcast. Remove self and let the Holy Spirit take charge in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love the world that he gave his, his son. Psalms 89. The word of God said in verse 1, I will sing of his praises, I will sing of his mercies. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Mercy shall be built up forever. Hallelujah. Though established in the very events let's read verse 1 again everyone Psalms 89 we're going up on route 89 everyone ready let's go I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever with my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations for I have said mercy shall be built up forever thy faithfulness thou shall establish in the very event events Verse 3, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have swore unto David my servant. Thy seed I will establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders. O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Verse 6. For who in heaven can compare unto the Lord? Question. Who among the men, who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Question. Verse 7. Root 89. Psalms 89. God is greatly to be feared 
in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him O Lord God of hosts who is a strong Lord like unto thee question art to thy faithfulness round about thee question thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves thereof arise thou stillest them thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain thou hast scattered thy enemies with thy strong arms hallelujah verse 11 the heavens are thine the earth also is thine as for the world and the fullness thereof thou found them hallelujah thank you jesus reading at verse 12 the north and the south thou has created them tabar and ermon shall rejoice in thy name thou hast a mighty arm strong is thy hand and, and high is thy right hand justice and judgment are the inhabitants of thy throne mercy and truth shall go before thy face verse 15 blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk O Lord in the light of thy countenance in thy name shall they rejoice all the day and in the righteousness in thy righteousness shall they be exalted this is the word of god evangelist at are reading the word of god psalms 89 root 89 taking a trip this message entitled taking a gospel trip trip with gospel song and reading of the word of god we are reading psalms 89 going up route 89 right now we are at mile post 17 verse 17 for thou art the glory of their strength and in thy favor our own shall be exalted for the lord is our defense and the holy one of israel is our king then thou speakest in vision to thy holy one that is mighty I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Verse 20. I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. Verse 22. Verse 22. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflicted him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. Verse 24, reading Psalms 89, mile post 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be upon him and in my name shall his horn be exalted verse 25 i will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers verse 26 he shall cry unto me thou art my father my god and the rock of my salvation also will i make him my firstborn higher than the king of the earth verse 28 my mercy will i keep for him forevermore and my covenant shall stand fast with him reading the word of god pick it up a little bit now verse 29 pick it up a little bit now his seed also will i make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments if they break my statutes and keep not in my commandments 
then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. This is the word of God reading from Psalms 89. We're going up Route 89. This is the word of God at this time. We're at mile post 33 in Psalms 89. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take away, take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail him. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that is gone out of my lips. Once I have swore by my holiness that will I that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall be hinged, his seed shall endure forever. Hallelujah. Verse 36, reading Psalms 89, Route 89. We are at milepost 36. His seed shall endure forever. His throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Verse 38. But thou hast cast off and aborted, aborted thou hast been wrought with thy anointed. God is speaking to the people. Listen what God is saying to the people. Listen what God, verse 38, reading Psalms 89, verse 39. Let's go verse 38. But thou hast cast off and aborted, thou hast been wrought with thy anointed. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant, and has provoked and have profaned, sorry, his crown by casting it to the ground. Thou hast broken down all his edges, and has brought his stronghold to ruin. All that passed by the way spoiled him. He is a, a rip, he is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the set up the right hand of his adversary. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and has not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease and cause his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth as though shortened, thou hast covered him with shame. O long, O Lord, will thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy rod burn like fire? Remember now, Remember how short my time is. Wherefore thou hast made all men in vain. Question. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Verse 48. Verse 48. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Question. Shall he deliver his soul from the end of the grave? <laughs> Question. Lord, where are thy former loving kindness, which thou swearest unto David in thy youth? Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants. How I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people, wherewithin my enemies have reproached. O oh Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footstep of thy anointed. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a few comments because of time, short comments in the Psalms. So we're going to park in a verse, in verse 80. This is Psalms 89, root 89. So we want to park in the little park. Let's take a little look in the verse, verse 48 in Psalms 89 and root 89. Verse 48 said, what man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Ladies and gentlemen, these psalms was written in a time when the people of God was going through a hard time. The question was asked, what man is there who will not see death? And the answer is this, if Jesus don't come back soon, 
all of us will die. But the Bible said, when Jesus come again, there will be people living. So all men will not die according to the word of God. Because people will be living when Jesus shall come. But the Lord, the Bible said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And every eye shall be holy. him. The question was asked, what man is he that liveth that shall not see death? My answer, if Jesus don't come back, all of us who are living now will not live forever. But people will be living when Christ shall come again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said those that are die shall rise again. And those that are living shall be caught up. So that means people will be still living. So if you continue to live right, we can live till Christ come. But a good thing if we die, we shall live again. Now the reason why this question was asked in the Psalms, because this was a troublesome time in the life of David. David was the anointed king from God. But even though David was anointed, he go through a lot of troubles too. You notice sometime David in his history, there was time when they lost war. Because of sin, sometime the presence of God would go with them. Because even though if you are living right today, if we turn from God and we don't listen to the word of God, God will not follow us in sin. God will not uh, support us in sin. And when the people of back there was dwelling in sin and going to war and all that, God would not go with them if they don't heal and listen to the word of God. Read back in the Old Testament, you will see I'm not telling you a lie. It's the truth. When, the, when there was sin in the camp, you remember in the Old Testament, there was sin in the camp. When, when the people of Israel go to war, they lost the war because sin was in the camp. Somebody was sinning and steal the Babylonian garment. And that's why they lose to that army that they shouldn't have lost to. And when they lost and they pray, God tell them, Listen, it's not just for pray right now or to cry to me, but it's time to get rid of sin. As we travel on this pathway, this trip, this trip through the valley of the shadow of death, we are going through a hard time. Now, in your personal life, we might be going through a storm some of us might be going through a fire some might be coming out of a fire heading into another into a flood but ladies and gentlemen what am i trying to say in the psalms you can find confidence ladies and gentlemen david was faithful but the bible said in psalms 89 verse 31 if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments i will visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes what god is saying if you're not following me if you're not obeying my word i'm gonna visit you and you're gonna suffer if you turn from god word if you turn from god word ladies and gentlemen god said he will deal with you but then god swear that he will not lie to david because he promised david that his seed shall endure forever and his throne and his throne as a son god said he established a law with David. So in spite of the sin of men and women, God is faithful. In spite of the sin of women and men, boy and girl, all of us, God is faithful. And as we travel on this Christian journey, what if God is unhappy with the way we are living now? He says we turn from his stature. You think I'm making up that? Psalms 89, read verse 31. Psalms 89 verse 31 said, If they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will not ultimate, ultimately take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. What is God saying? In spite of your rudeness and your badness, I'm willing to save you as we take this trip. I pray that God's blessing will come our way. And I want to remind somebody that God loves you. And as we travel on this Christian journey, remember to look to Jesus. No matter what trip you take, the goal of all trip is to get to a final destination. And I pray that we'll get the proper information. And on this trip, you can learn one thing. The Bible said, if we turn from our sin, God will hear from heaven. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 through 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their sins, I will heal their land. 
every nation, every boy, every man, every woman, every girl, every one of us, everywhere in the world, if we want to get back on track, we have to get back in obeying the word of God. May the peace of God rest upon you now and forever. In Jesus' name. This is Evangelist Head Back to saying this message entitled Taking a Gospel Trip Part 2. Please kindly share this message with someone. It might be a blessing with them and for them too. In Jesus' name. I'm planning to be here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm planning to be up on Hallelujah Square. I don't know about you, but I'm planning to be up on Hallelujah Square. I pray that we all will be there in Jesus' name. Are you planning to be there? I'm planning to be there up in Hallelujah Square. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe and share this message with someone in Jesus' name. Come on.